I was so frantically typing, <laughs> I forgot to unmute the phone. I, uh, I've still got my headphones on. I'm just not with it tonight. I'm not with it at all. Yeah, the English title was just Gwendolyn as well. But uh, if anyone hasn't seen the film, uh, The Perils of Gwendolyn in the, in the Land of the Yik Yak, then uh, it's a great film. It's like Mad Max with a, a, like a woman cast, like Amazonians. Uh, but the, the lead star died this week, so uh, I was tempted to put it up. They're looking for a, like a, a sacred butterfly from what I remember. It's been a long time. It was either that or, you know, I could put something up like fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. But then probably the only person who would get that would be Mrs. Welder Wayne. <laughs> oh dear, how the devil is everybody? And how the devil are you Christian? Let's give it up big time. Hello Christian from Grantham. Now let's get cracking. You know what, Christian? We're going to be in we're going to be in Scotland in August, so we're going to be passing Grantham. So we're going to have to meet up in the services, so I can meet you, <laughs> which will be fun. Uh, quite quite a lot going on tonight, I have to say. We're going to be doing the uh, the X Wing, uh, which is all electrics by the look of it. In fact, if I was to say I'm going to do issue sixty six now, I've done it. There you go. Did you like it? <laughs> you haven't got to do anything. That was just in a box. And then they said, you know, keep it safe. That was issue 66. So we, we won't be starting on issue 66 tonight. Did you enjoy that? Can you imagine if I made that into a video? That'd be crazy. Um, I think we'll start with the Jaws. How are we getting on with Jaws? Well, this is the resin, the test. And as you can see, look, check this out. You're going to love this. This is paint, the, uh, the acrylic paint that peeled off. It wasn't to do with heat, it's the paint, trust me. This thing didn't get above 40 degrees C. So what I did do is after the first pour, I put some varnish on his back. And look, paint is untouched. So it's just the, the way the, res the resin reacted with the paint. But above it, no problems at all. It's uh, completely solid, as you can see. Hard as rock. They say seven days to cure. No bubbles whatsoever. And this sand wasn't treated either. So everything is set up in the uh, workshop ready for the pour and I'll just show you the pose that it's going to be in it's going to look just like this so that's the pose as you can see everything's being held up there so I can start the resin pour the resin pour in the tank that I've done on the base is solid as a rock as well so we are ready to go with that so that is absolutely brilliant so happy with that um, and I am under the impression that Phil is just finishing up his pours now but um, I'm going to let him fill you in on all that <laughs> Bergdish, you're going to be getting the jab excellent now i i will be trying to pick up every comment tonight it's very hard on the build night so uh, if i'd miss your comment i apologize now but uh, uh just if it's something you really want to know just email me or something like that uh but uh good and holger ninja you know I, i've all been around and Narken Munich, but I, I've never Berlin. I did get the option to go to Berlin, but uh, I'd already spent three months out there, and I was getting a little bit homesick, so I wanted I wanted to come home. <laughs> oh, it's too long a glass, but it's amazing. Yeah, it's I only it's only a um a test. This was so it didn't matter what vessel I was putting it in. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't use vessel because as you can see, it's like a um uh, it's magnified the shark and distorted it because it didn't look like this when I put it in. Trust me, that's why we've got the square tank when we do the uh, the full build. I am on the rum again, Jono, and, and believe it or not, I'm a bit perked up. I've had a shave before the stream. I'm not, not actually very well. I've, 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 I thought I had hay fever this morning, but it's more like a flu. So I've, uh, I've had some paracetamol and we're ready to go. I, I, don't think, I don't think yesterday's video helped. Just so you know, uh, with yesterday's video, the Zero Fighter, that took 12 hours all in total, 10 hours to film, and I was editing as I went along. And the whole thing went completely wrong. Now, in the video, it's very clever editing. It looks like it went fine. There is a couple of things you'll notice. Some things seem to be on the wrong way. After the stream, I rectified what I'd done. But seriously, it got to the point where I was just going to trash the whole lot and go back to Agora and say, I need boxes one and two again to start again. Because it was that hard. And I'm telling you, and I already spoken to a couple of people who have had the same problem. So if you are doing the Zero Fighter, please, please, please take your time on it, especially when it comes to actually fitting all the engine parts together. Not so much the cables, but the actual metal bits and the exhaust, because it's it's hard. It's really hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's, it's definitely the hardest build I've ever done. That, just that bit, hardest build I've done. Even it buries issue 91 of the DeLorean it buries issue 48 of the DeLorean 
But yeah, very, very hard. It looks great. You watch The Meg, a, a lot of Jaws tribute. The Meg was quite a good film. You have poor picture quality and I keep jumping, do I? It doesn't say that. I'm going to turn off my Plex server. But uh, I don't know why that is, I'm afraid. But uh, there you go. Hopefully we'll be all right tonight. If we do lose signal, then uh, I'm on a public stream, so it will just come straight back. Hopefully. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Are we? Are we? Are we working again now? The exhaust pipes are exhausting. Very good. Oh no, the wife is watching Vets on TV again. <laughs> look fine to me. I don't know what's going on there then. But there you go. Look, I'm back, and uh, I haven't had any warnings on the screen, so hopefully we're all right. <coughs> all right, cool, losing my thing. Um, next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at some merch on the map. Now, uh, Jim, you were the one that pu pulled that out to me about the uh, staggered scream. So I think we should do what we normally do, and that is uh, go to the maps. And as you can see, I'm somewhere in Corby. There. Where am I? I'm there in Corby. Uh, and we're going to zoom out uh, to a place I used to work, which is just northwest London. Uh, in a place called High Wycombe. I used to work here. Uh, funny enough, before I knew the road system, one day I was meant to go to Reading, which is over here. I'm just going to hide your message, uh, Steve Power. I was meant to go to Reading over here, and before I realised I went on the wrong road and confused the M4 with the M40, I ended up in Banbury. <laughs> so, <laughs> a bit out of the way. But in High Wycombe, merch on the map, we have got... Blah, 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 Jim Stroffer! Whose legs in a cast? You're not looking good there, <laughs> Jim. But I do love that shirt. Now, I ordered my shirt the same time you ordered that. So I want to know where my shirt is. <laughs> Mine hasn't arrived, but thank you for submitting that. That's excellent. If you've got any merchandise or you've ordered some merchandise from my uh, store, which is, uh, <coughs> where are we? Which is there. I've got all the t-shirts in there. Then by all means, take a picture. or get someone to take a picture of you and send them in to me. And you will feature on the merch on the map and I'll put you on there. No problems at all. Uh... Hello, Easy Customs. How are you in France? Uh, funny enough, um, I don't know if you saw the message before the stream started. I have had, apart from the Ecto-1 and the Enterprise, every single build that I'm doing at the moment all come in the last three days. So there's hundreds of things here. So I was looking at Mario Brewer. Brewer? He's German, German in a German channel. Um, I think I'm going to do the Peugeot 205 tomorrow because we get to start putting the carpet in the uh, floor pan. Floor pan, not floor plan. <laughs> So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I have got Fast and the Furious. I've got the Eleanor. I've got um, Ferrari. I've got Spitfires. I've got Bismarcks. I've got Terminators. I've got... Um, oh, I've got <laughs> <laughs> so all fun. Oh, Brian, you're on Patreon too. Oh, we have fun over on Patreon. I try and update as much as possible. And on the Sundays, I'll try and do some sort of stream in the car because I get bored with Mrs. World of Wayne driving back from Essex. So, uh, but thank you for that. Thank you for joining. Um, World of Wayne, uh, evening from sunny Liverpool. Vincent's nearly finished. Just waiting on two things and he's done. That's going to be excellent. You're going to be off work for three months. Oh, my God. So you have plenty of builds to do. I think they're announcing the NFL game soon. I believe that um, Philadelphia Eagles and Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be the, the, home, the home teams. So that's going to be good. But Graham Loki talking about Vincent. <laughs> uh, guess what? Let me skip the camera. Look at this. Look. So, for all of you who don't know what this is, this is Vincent's brain. Look how big it is. Actually, it makes a good cap, actually, doesn't it? Wow. I could wear this as a cap. Why do I keep putting things on my head? I don't know. But yeah, look, I could wear that on my head. Well, so there's four of these. That's going to give you an idea. I'm building a 1-1 one, one Vincent. Now, I know that I've built one before and I hadn't got around to finish it, which is what Graham Loki's doing. And I have got a quarter size one, which I haven't done anything with. It's printed and it's still sitting in the uh, the workshop. The reason I'm building it is because um, Ian Hughes, the designer of it, he's actually got hold of the proper blueprints and he's redone the whole thing. And that's why we've got things like this, which you're never going to see on the original one he's done. As a matter of fact... If I show you what that looks like, that's his 3D printed, which has been also cut down so you can print it on either a 500 times 500 3D print bed, and he's also cut it down to fit on an end of three, a 220 times 220 uh, uh, print bed. And the other good thing about this is you don't really have to glue it together because it all bolts together. You can see all of the holes inside ready to put bolts in and stuff. 
But uh, that's Ian Hughes's um, uh, design of Vincent. Now, Ian does loads of 3D printed robots and he has got a Patreon page. Um, I don't know if I've got, hang on a second. I think I've got a link for him. I'm gonna put the link in chat for his Patreon. Now, all of these are on his OneDrive. There we go, there's a link in the chat there. But as you can see, he's got K9, Robin Robot, Maximilian, Bob. Absolutely brilliant there. But uh, yeah, good good guy. And I joined his Patreon last week because uh, I don't know what was going on in the Facebook group, but he has a OneDrive and he just keeps everything updated in the OneDrive. And even though he has finished Vincent, he's still doing updates because uh, he's, he's, like, he's like a lot of us, where if something just doesn't look right, he, he'll tinker with it. A bit like the, uh, the Enterprise today. So uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's my new hat. Yeah, this, this, it could be a new futuristic design. I, I don't understand. Look, it fits around the front of my head. It don't fit around the side of my head at all. My head must be a right weird shape. <laughs> Let me put that to one side because that's going to get in the way. Um, you spied a B9. Wow. <laughs> uh, right, what else have I got lined up on here? Um, I think that's everything. I think, wow, I think we've worked for everything on a Tuesday night. That's good. Wow, very good. So um, tonight, as I said, we're going to be doing... Uh, I've, you 3D printed the Liberator? <laughs> oh, God. I've uh, I've already showed you both NFL games at the Spurs, Spurs ground. Ah, oh, oh, you see? There you go and spoil it. <laughs> I was hoping Wembley again. I got away with the... Uh, I mean, the Spurs ground was made for the NFL games anyway. They got the retractable pitch and stuff, but that don't make it any easier. So, oh, I remember what the other thing was. I remember what the other thing was. Uh, okay, I'm going to put it in, uh, uh, I'm going to make a caption, bear with me a second. Uh, I have a giveaway, a competition tonight. So, I've just got to, I thought I'd done this before the stream, but I hadn't. Typical. Wayne, you should get these things set up. Right, okay, so, we have got a link, it started at 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, this is the link to the IXO competitions where you can win the first nine boxes of the Peugeot 205 build. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you go over to that site and start uh, entering, I think all you've got to do is visit YouTube, visit Twitter. You haven't got to do anything gr uh, grand. Uh, it's only open to folks in the UK. And unfortunately, it's not open to people in Northern Ireland. I can get around the UK. I can get to Scotland. I can get to Wales. But it's going to be a, a bit of a task to get to our Northern Ireland, I'm afraid. Because I'm going to be delivering it personally to you. And the competition ends on the 3rd of June, I believe. But on the uh, Gleam site there, you'll be able to enter that. And all you've got to do is just uh, visit a Twitter page, visit IXO Collections, visit my YouTube channel, and I don't know. They're, they're, all the instructors are on the Gleam site there. Uh, but yeah, there's nine boxes, which is, I believe, up to stages 36. Could be wrong, but it's 1 to 36 of the Peugeot build. So pretty much where I'm up to at the moment on there. Great build. So... Uh, Ian Childs, I would say the uh, the end of three is a great printer, and failing that, the other one I've got is an FL Sun QQ, which is great as well. So, all good. I will try and get the East Midlands. I will try and get down to Corby Station on Thursday, but my car goes in at nine o'clock, so if it's not ready, I won't get there. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. You're hearing Jags versus Dolphins. That's what my son said. He's a big Dolphins fan. But I'm easy. I just want to watch a game. I don't. Uh, I don't really mind which one. It would be nice to see the Rams again, but they, uh, when they came over last time, they dominated it. So, uh, Twitter again? No, no. It, 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 just because you can't enter on Twitter, Paul, you, there's other things. You, you, you get if you can't visit Twitter, there's still three other things you can do, and you'll get free entries. I don't pick it; it's a random thing. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, all you got to do is visit YouTube. You've already done that, so just click on that and click continue. Visit IXO Collections. You just click on that link and then it will automatically enter. Pretty easy stuff. <laughs> am I still building the Iron Man? John's model making. I am still building the Iron Man, but um, a fan home are now collaborated with me. So I, I'm getting Iron Man sent to me for free because I'm collaborating. The trouble is they can't start me from where I left off in issue 10. So they whiz me all the way back to issue 1. So now I'm waiting to get back to issue 10 before I can continue. As a matter of fact, look. I've got the uh, I've got the box here of Iron Man once again. Oh, see issue one again. <laughs> so uh, not much I can do with that, unfortunately. 
But there you go. I know loads of you. You've ordered the IXO Porsche. Um, I'm waiting for them to get in touch with me about that. I haven't heard anything yet, Pete, but it does look good. Hello, Pierre. How's it going? Uh, it's not a sponsor giveaway. Nope, it's not a sponsor giveaway. Uh, Wayne has some stuff that you personally give away and, we deli uh, and we'll deliver it personally. That's that's absolutely right. Yep, it's, uh, it's not sponsored at all. It's just what I had lying around. So I thought, yeah, all good. Um, if you want to know where it come from, actually, who's this? Uh, Ra Ra Raja. Uh, what, what happened was they delivered two boxes to me, IXO Collections, uh, in the space of two days. And I said to them, you've sent me two boxes. What do you want me to do? And they come from France. And they said it would cost more logistically to send it back to just do a giveaway. So that's what I'm doing. But that was about a year ago. <laughs> but then, then COVID hit. And I wanted to do it because it's such a big box. I want to deliver it personally. So I thought what we'll do is... Uh, We'll wait till we're allowed out again, which I believe we are now. And uh, I will do that and I will deliver it to you. So that'd be fun. Plus, Mrs. me and Mrs. World of Wayne can get around the country. <laughs> you got your second enterprise of enterprise today. I am loving that, but I really enjoy putting those transfers on today. I tell you, it made me feel like a kid again, scratching them all off. So hello, evening. Back on the computer. Everyone's doing the enterprise everyone you know what the channel at the moment in the last 48 hours we've had 53,000 views and it's been like that for a week now unbelievable so thank you all for your support and for watching and stuff i really appreciate that and uh i just keep shaking my head <laughs> thinking you know, how good hello gunny one two one gunny i haven't got a picture so i'd have to do it uh bruce here uh from america sent me some stuff uh in the post and i've got some bits here actually stand by Ooh, one of them i can't show you because I've already put it up, but I've got some, uh, thank you for this, uh, Bruce. I really appreciate this. Look, some Back to the Future Nano Hollywood Rides time machines. Put that there, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we've got, uh, and if we don't get Home de de how do you pronounce it in America? Home Depot? Because it's Depot. The Home Depot doesn't sound right as when you say it for an English. The Home Depot, little apron. I love that. Uh, and we've got the Fast and the Furious Dodge Charger which is excellent. And the other thing he's gave me, but um, I don't know if I'll be able to get a picture up. Uh, stand by, I might, I might have a picture, which is, is absolutely amazing. <laughs> have I got a picture? Stand by, stand by, stand by. Um, I only put it up yesterday. I don't think I have, no. I'll get a picture for you, but basically he sent me a, uh, a shark toilet roll holder. So it's this shark with its fins out holding toilet rolls. It's, it's uh, straight away when Mrs. Welder Wayne saw it, she was like, you know what, that's, that's not going in my bathroom. I'm like, it's going in my bathroom. Yes, we've got different bathrooms. <laughs> we got three in this house, funny enough. You're halfway done over on Twitch there with the DeLorean. S'mores the Corgi Craftsman. Good build, the DeLorean. I, would, I, I was going to say it's quite a hard build, but compared to that zero, <laughs> no. You had to suspend the Enterprise because I need to get something finished. Just hoping my DB5 would come. I never got a chance to do the DB5. I really wish I could. But I understand that's got problems as well. Hello, Robert Lester. How's it going? You're, almost, you're about fed up with the Ecto-1, though. Been waiting on shipment with some back-order kits. 14 to 26 for three weeks now. Still haven't seen it. You know what we think, Robert? This is what we think happens, yeah? Say you're missing an issue or you haven't had a delivery and you need something resent. We think... They put in an order with the manufacturers in China. They get them together, manufacture it, and send it to Eagle Moss, which takes three weeks. And then you've got the 14 to 21 days for delivery. So it could altogether take six weeks from when you request it to when you get it. That's what I think happens. Why they don't admit that, I don't know. Because if that is what happens, I'm sure people would like you to be upfront about it rather than keep you hanging on saying it's going to be like next week. Crazy. You also want to start the Bismarck, but feel that's way above my level. No, the Bismarck's not too bad, actually. There's a couple of fiddly ones, but you take your time on that. You, you won't have a problem. Uh, have you watched The Wild Geese? I have. Great film. Roger Moore flies a DC-3 in the film. I didn't even know that was a DC-3, Dave. I have watched The Wild Geese. So I absolutely love that film. I, I'm a big fan of Roger Moore, to be honest with you. I like all his films. We had... Uh, what's the other one? It was in North Sea Hijack, but I think uh, in other countries it's called Folk, Folks. Why do I keep changing these names is beyond me. <laughs> are the lifeboats transfers difficult to apply? No, they are dead easy, Dan. I don't know about the vinyl sticker ones, but the rub-on ones are dead easy. You've just got to be careful not to take it off the back in too quick, otherwise it'll stick to anything. 
So, uh, yeah, you've got to be careful with that. So, uh, as I said, I will try and keep it up with the chat, but it's going to be hard when I'm actually building. So, we're going to get on with it. I will show you... Uh, hello, Diving Dan. Diving Dan. Is that Dan Goldman? You're a diver. <laughs> okay, so if you didn't believe me, this is issue 67 here. So, if we get to where it is now i haven't got any batteries so lucky we don't test anything but as you can see it's just that that's all they gave us just like that and uh there is absolutely nothing to do in issue 66 so issue 67 is looking like this and what we've got to do in that because i haven't got a clue is we're going to be assembling the remote control it looks easy lots of little controls and oh god all sorts of things where have we got our circuit board? Oh, that's the X-Wing circuit board. I was going to say, if we're doing just the remote, they've gave us the X-Wing circuit board as well. Um, I don't know how fiddly this is, but uh, I'm going to put this to one side and we will bring over issue 67. Yeah, my main chat night is Thursday nights, just so you know. Uh, Wednesdays is Patreon night and Tuesdays is normally car crash build night because uh, nothing ever normally goes right on a Tuesday. But we will see. <laughs> Lots of little bits here. Oh, I do like the rubber buttons. Yeah, they feel good. <laughs> okay. So we want to start with the remote control panel. And this little, I'm guessing, let me have a look at this, battery terminal. So we're going to be putting the battery into it. So I'm just going to unravel this wire. Now I understand some of the big problems on this X-Wing because luckily for me, a lot of people have already done this. Uh, the problems we've got are the, ele the electrics don't work very well. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this long spring cable just into the side here and that's gonna go right down the open side that we can see here. And we wanna make sure this is pushed in all the way, which to me, Ah, there we go, that's gone in fine. So that's now completely embedded in there, but it's sitting lovely in the channel that we've got there. That bit was easy. The uh, the next one is going next to it. So we just push that into the slot next to it. Uh, is that round the right way? Stand by. They're putting it in. Uh, yes, that is round. Just got to push it all the way down. That's never coming out again, I can tell you that now. So now we've got the terminals in. I can't believe we have to do that ourselves. That's a bit crazy. They want us to use a, a screwdriver to get that right down there. But yeah, that's all the way in. That was easy. <laughs> then we've got the next terminal, which goes the other sides. So obviously it's going to be opposites. So we want the spring to be opposite the flat terminal. So this is going in this way. And once again, they want that pushed all the way down. Very easy. I'm happy at the moment. <laughs> okay, then they want us to trace this wire around to pass it out the bottom of the unit. Something like that, I guess. Uh, no, we're not chasing it because we're going to be putting it into a circuit board, which I'm guessing is this circuit board. I'm a bit confused at where they've got this. They just saying put it in the circuit board. It looked like they were touching it away. Make sure the pins are the right way around. Push that all the way in. So the remote's working. I'm guessing. They want us to leave that hanging while we put the rubber in. I don't know if this is directional, but that seems to have fitted okay. I'm just looking at the other side. Yep, that looks okay. Wow. And then we're going to be putting this circuit board in. Right, okay, so it's going to go in. Just looking at this design. With the... Um, it, it's going to go in this way somehow, but... Uh, it's got to be face down. So how can we get that around that way? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm just looking at their picture. Hang on a second. See, they've got it round this way. But that, oh, I see. So this is going to go in front of that. Right, gotcha. So that goes in like that. Making sure I'm not pinching any of those wires. There we go. That's going to fit in just like that there. And the wire 
is basically just going into the trough that we've got there. So this is going to be held in with screws. And those screws are, stand by, XWO3 screws, which are these ones here. Still got a, 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 a really sharp scalpel. If anyone didn't see the Patreon stream, we replaced that on the Patreon stream. A lot of people held their breath when I did that. <laughs> Me and sharp instruments. I don't know why people get so worried, but there you go. Right, so I'm just going to line this up and put these screws in. I think it's being held in by... Gently press the circuit board into the front panel, fitting it over the arrow locating pins. Note the transparent dial and line up the hole at the top of the panel. Now, before I put that on then, this has got to go into some locating pins, which I can see, but it wasn't fitting flat. Right, let's try that again. Right, there on the pins, and then we can get that in. Can you believe we've got to make our own remote control? Most builds just give you it. <laughs> And then this one, just at the bottom here. So that's the circuit board in place. Then we're gonna be putting this together. So the back is gonna go on the front and we should see the little infrared light there. And then that's gonna be held in once again with one screw here, which is an XWO3 screw, just to hold all of that together. Ugh which doesn't want to go in. Try that again. There we go. Now that screw is not biting very well. Trick it again. It doesn't feel like that's going in, I have to say. I'm going to take it out again. I'm not happy with that. You know what? I'm just, uh, let me get my glasses on a second. I want to check something. You know what? The top of that screw head is now damaged. I don't know if I can show you. Let's get it out. I haven't hardly ever done anything with it. So here's the uh, the usual car crash, using a different screwdriver. That is bad. I don't know if you can see that, but look, the top of the screw head's broken in half. How bad is that? Oh dear. That reminds me of the MM screws. I, I hardly put it in. All right, let's uh, put this together again, and I'll try with another screw. Why do these things all go wrong on a... See, that one's locking in fine. That, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to show you really close up. Look. Look at that. How bad is that? Anyway, look, we've got a remote control. All the buttons pressed, so that's good. All we've got to do is put the battery box in here. And obviously put batteries in this. Which doesn't want to fit in nicely either. There we go. That's in. And that's the remote control done. And that's all we've got to do in this stage, leaving the control board, which I'm guessing is going to be for the X-Wing. So that was stage 67 complete. Let's do stage 68. Stand by. I haven't had a screw break on me in a long time. And you saw there, I wasn't going over the top with it. So, uh, I don't know what that was all about. Car crash already. Tuesday's a car crash night, you know that, hence why I'm on the run. <laughs> There's another movie called Gold. I remember Gold, Bobby. That's a brilliant movie as well. <laughs> MM Glass Screw. It does. It did remind me of that MM Glass Screw, uh, Minnesota. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, when we mentioned about the MM Screw for the DeLorean build and how it's breaking and it was like a glass screw, people actually thought the screw was made of glass. I was like, no. It's just a, a figure of speed. So, issue 68. I haven't looked at these, so I don't quite know what we're doing. So, stand by. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Gears. Okay, so we're going to do the electric motor and gearbox. This is going to need some concentration. Remember, you're talking about um, 
You, oh my god, you were talking about car crash? I think we're about to see it right now. Look at all these gears. <laughs> my god. Okay, let's uh, let's open this up. I did like Roger Moore as the saint. He was brilliant as the saint. Right, stand by. I'm going to have to try and figure out issue 68 we want. That's this one. Look at all those gears. This is going to be crazy. I can see us not getting past this. It's going to take some concentration. You're going to see me doing some crazy stuff with gears because um, I've taken them to apply oil to them rather than grease. Just to give them a bit of lube up. And no, I don't think the uh, oil is going to destroy the plastic over time. That's a nice chunky motor. I take it that's the motor that's going to power the wings. Not sure. Seems quite chunky. Right. Oh, God help us. Right, I'm going to open the screws up as well. Let's try and get myself in order here. These screws are XW08 screws. So I'll put them to one side. And the first thing we want is this case. Nope. Is this case looking like that? And uh, four spindles, one of which is thicker than the other three. So these are the spindles. We've got four of those. So start with a thick spindle. That's this one here. And that's going to go into the bigger hole in the middle. So far, so good. Then the other three are going to go one in front. There. Uh, one in front of that. There. And then I'm guessing <laughs> one in front again there. So that's looking like that. Yes, so far so good. Right, take these eight gears, leaving out the small driving pinion for now. Right, okay, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, uh, Stand by. I'm just going to quickly do an inventory count on that because uh, I should have one, two, three, four, five. I should have six of these, which I've got. One intermediate gear, one large drive gear, and the driving pinion. So we don't need this little one at the moment. We can put that to one side. So the six reduction gears are identical, each with a small center hole and a small inner cog. These gears are used in steps 10.21. So we're going to take one of these and holding it this way up. We're going to drop that down the first spindle all the way to the bottom excellent the next gear take an identical one and once again we're going to drop that all the way to the bottom and it's going to engage with the first gear but it's going to be a level up if you like so all the way to the bottom making sure they turn that looks good can you see that in there we get in there right third gear slide it down Stand by. So we're going to be putting another one of these gears onto the first spindle. This reminds me of uh, Build the Orrery from Eagle Moss. That was all gears. Uh, so it looks like that. Then we're going to be putting another one next to it. That's four gears on two spindles so far. Like that. Then we're going to be putting another one on that one. That's five gears. They're pretty locked in at the moment. I can't move them. So I'm hoping the motor will be able to. I suppose we haven't put the motor in yet. But there we go. That's five gears. And then we've got to put the sixth one in. Surprise, surprise. In that side there as well. So we've got six gears on two spindles at the moment. Looking like that. Then we're going to have one of the two remaining gears has a small sense hole and large inner cog. Uh, that's got to be this one here, looking like that. That's going to go on to the second spindle. Push that down, like that. And then finally, the last gear we've got is this really big one, which is just going on the end here. Now, push that down. Uh, is that going around the right way? It is going around the right way all the way down making sure they interlock as well now they're all interlocked now there we go it's turning it doesn't like it very much though I think I'm just going to look that again 
because that noise that you're hearing can you hear that that grinding noise that's what's been told to me i know these haven't been put in properly because this is going to hold them in but that's been told that's the sort of noise you get when the engines are when the the, the wings are opening so you know what i'm going to do i'm just gonna loop them up with a bit of oil on all of these gears now this oil will run down the shafts into the cogs i'm just covering them everywhere i should have really done it as i went along but uh when they start turning we'll see where we go so once we've done that i'm guessing we're going to put the housing on yep we are going to put the cows in on it's going to match exactly what we've got there so it'll be this way around and we want to make sure all of these spindles here engage <laughs> sounds like a star trek reference okay so i'm just lining them up just making sure we get them in the right holes one two three and four and there we go that wasn't so bad really was it <laughs> we're gonna hold this together with four screws and that's the ones we just opened yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get the grease on there later on i've got some grease downstairs so that's one it means open them back up again but to be honest with you putting them in was quite easy i still have this drive gear here which they haven't asked us to do anything with i'm guessing that's going to go on the motor this is number two uh should be four screws this one number three over this side that's not opening again and lastly number four just in this corner here the innuendos tonight are going big time <laughs> yeah i will i will lube them up this this channel loves lube you know that don't you <laughs> Okay, so we can put that to one side because we're going to be fitting the drive pinion on the motor. I don't think it goes on a separate way, so I'll put that on just like this and it fits. How far down? Hmm. It doesn't actually say. It's quite a little pain to get on. I'm going to have to do the old-fashioned way of pushing the part onto it like that. There we go. And that's the little drive pinion on uh it's intentionally a tight fit so press it onto the shaft using the work surface that's what i just did the outer face of the pinion should be flush with the end of the drive shaft which it is and then we're going to be putting this into this section here what way round have they got it they've got it with the wires facing the main body of this so this is going to go in like that i need to make sure that that gear engages to the gear underneath so that is fully engaged in there i hope they let us test this i'm going to try it in a minute it's only a motor uh once we've done that we've got uh stand by press the motor into the gearbox the pinion needs to mesh with the reduction gear for it to go away and you can turn the arrowed gear if you need to move the teeth to the right position i think we're okay i mean my gears aren't turning that's the problem i've got they're not turning at all so i think that lube thing is probably a best idea um i don't know if we can test this yet but you know what i'm gonna have a damn good go the worst that can happen is it blow up but if it doesn't work which i didn't think it will it's jammed solid in there so we do need to lube these up i told you this one's gonna take forever right so let's get this out i'll leave that in there and i'll just undo these parts here I wasn't happy with them when we first put them in see not so much car crash because i knew that was going to happen <laughs> right i take all of them out and i think i'm going to lube them up as we go in and you know what i can't understand why why wouldn't they have put a, a, why wouldn't they have asked us to put the motor in first I'm a little bit confused by that because i can engage that these pieces to that motor that doesn't make any sense to me at all so let's put these back in so we've got the three 
single ones. And the bigger one here. And I am going to run oil right down the length of these. Because basically, there's such a tight fit on these that the, uh, the gears just weren't turning. I will... Yeah, I will grease up the, the the teeth later, but I definitely want to put oil on these spindles here Just like that right. Let's try that again. So theoretically There's no reason why I can't drop that down there. Oh, that's better. That's lovely and loose now See it engages with a motor. We should have put the motor in first. That, that doesn't make any sense to me at all Second one. Oh That's lovely. Oh, it's so smooth Third one see I make mist well It's not really a mistake because they didn't tell us to do that did they? Fourth, fifth, make sure that's engaged, and sixth, then this one, whoops, the daisies, I'm still not happy with how that's not turning, and then this one here. Don't, these don't want to turn. Why don't they want to turn? These are very bad gears. Anyone got any suggestions? Oh, they're not going to turn because the motor's engaged now. That's why. Stupid me. Right. So theoretically, when I put this all back together and try the motor out, it should work. So, screw it back in. That was the run then. I should have known that. I bet people are screaming at me. Yeah, the motor's engaged. Yeah, Lou, see? I knew someone would be screaming at me. <laughs> it will turn when I finish, and That motor is engaged, but I've just put two screws in at the moment. Now, theoretically, this should work. Or is this just not enough power to run it? Because this is only really for lights, isn't it? No, we, we're not going to get to test it. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. But uh, I don't think I can get this out now. Oh, yeah, I can. I've taken that out. I want to be able to see if I can turn it. Like, I can't even turn it without the motor in. See? That should be turning. I'm not I'm not continuing with this until we get that working. It needs six volts. Yeah, it might be the voltage. But these, are, it's not engaged anymore. It's not engaged. So, so fear, oh, God, look, they've all dropped out again. It's not engaged, but these, they're turning okay on the spindles. Let's put that one back in. I'm just not happy with how they're, uh, I mean, I know we're not, we're not meant to do this now, but if they're not turning now, we're going to have a problem later, big time. Did any, reduction is too great to turn by hand, do you reckon? I mean, they're telling us in the instructions, Chris, to turn it by hand. They're saying if it's not lining up, turn it by hand. Now, if you see before, look, let's do it as we go along. So we put the, we put the first gear in, and then we'll put the next one in next to it, just like this. Whoops. And it will just come flying out. Hang on a second. Stand by. Right. Now, they turn absolutely fine. Uh, to prove that, let's just get my thing. See, look, lovely smooth turn in there. Put one on top. And again, if I just push some of these lugs around, it turns. See? Next one. You'd think with the mo more gears in there, the easier it would get. See, that's turning. I could do that with my hand, actually. No problems. Next one. I'll put the next two in, actually. I think that's where it's struggling, then, from that one there. Doesn't want to turn after that one. Now, all of the teeth are engaged. Doesn't want to turn. I'm a bit nervous about that, I have to say. What do you think? 
you think it's going to be fine okay all right i'll put it together then and uh we'll keep going i mean they are definitely definitely all engaged definitely i would like a way to test it you said six volts yeah I've got six volts here. <laughs> I could, uh, oh, I've, got, I've got to try it later, haven't I? Like, let's just put this last one in. There we go. But, oh, look, look, there we go. That's what I was looking for. That. See, look, it is turning. I'm happy now. Right, okay. I was going to say, it shouldn't be that tight to turn. Because all that's going to do is give us problems later on. I've heard that when the wings open, you're hearing all sorts of cranks and stuff. The reason why I was so... I'm going to use the word anal about this is that... Let me go back to the normal camera so I can uh, lament with you. The reason I'm so so adamant to get the gears right and turning like they were just then is that when I built the Thunderbird 2 from Diagostini, that had great problems with the gears. And it took me almost a day to try and figure out what was going on. And I think everyone's had the same problem. But when you get to the final one, the gears, once the, the Thunderbird went up, it just started to grind and crank. And it turned out that as it was turning, the gears were pulling themselves out of position. And then they're just starting to go over each other. And the fix was, well, there's two ways to do a fix, actually. You could either buy some washers to lift the gears up a bit. Or what I did was just don't put the, uh, don't put the case in all the way. And that worked as well. I can't remember what screw hole I've got left to do. It's this one here. But um, I think everyone who's done the Thunderbird 2, including my brother in Canada, had the problem. Trust the process. I don't trust anything. Though. <laughs> but it got me because they were talking about this turning. But obviously that works now. So we've got that in place. We can now push the motor in to make sure it engages. Now I'm hoping that's engaged. I'm thinking it has can't see why not now it's engaged i won't be able to turn that anyway and then we're going to be putting this over the top of that so we put the wire through here just like that over the top of the motor and then this is going to be screwed into place with one of the screws that was uh that was a lot easier than i thought it would be i have to say apart from you know me panicking about the gears <laughs> but that's one motor now does this just control one wing i guess we're gonna to have to do two of these aren't we don't know it will work wayne i hope so <laughs> i'm trusting you <laughs> issue 69 let's have a look what we're doing in issue 69 we're doing the wing mechanism support in this one um i'm not quite sure there's not a lot to do in this one actually so let's have a look at those parts there. Uh, all four? Oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. What's the time? Oh, we've got 10 minutes. There's not much to do. So let's... Uh, I think there's quite a lot to do in the next one. Oh, we've got some metal here. Right. Let's see what we've got to do in this one. Lay this out. So we're going to need our original battery box that we had. God, these are big, aren't they? Look at all this. We'll open the uh, metal rods up here. Right, so we want to take... I'm confused. Stand by. Take the end brace, which is this, and we're going to line it up with the two pins that we've got on this side here and here. So I can do that no problems whatsoever and it's just a push into place just like most of this build to be honest with you it's uh they don't like using glue on this build they just want us to clip things in like that so that bit's easy then we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to be putting it on top of this section here somehow <laughs> so i'm guessing this uh, let me think. This is going in that way, is that right? Just uh, having a look, yep. Yeah. That's going in just like that. Start to fix the supporting place using XW08 screws in this hole. Uh, <laughs> God, the picture's bad, but we've got a hole 
just there that they want us to start that up with. Just looking at how big just this unit is, is starting to give me an idea of size for this X-Wing. It's going to be ginormous. Right, so that's one in that hole. Add another screw just to the other side. Try not to pinch any wires here. Then it wants us to add a screw to what holds that one. Uh, bum, bum, bum. It's basically everywhere there's a hole. <laughs> so one down here. That's three I've got in there. One up the other end. That one's four. Altogether, it's five screws that we're putting in. And the last one. <laughs> Wayne's just figured out how big it's going to be. Yep. I have to do that, uh, Gary Koza, because uh, if I was to tell Mrs. Werner Wayne right at the start how big it's going to be, you've seen the problems I'm having with the uh, Enterprise. Oh, this isn't good. There we go. Add a pinched wire there. The last one just going in this side here. That's five screws. And that is all there is to do in that stage. We want to keep these rods safe for next time. So we have got... I reckon we should do it. We can do it. Can we do five issues? Let's have a look. So in this one... Oh, God, it's more gears. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be creating more gears. And by the end of it, we're going to have... I don't know if we're going to finish this, but we'll see. They do like to put 100 pictures in for one sort of part. So issue 70 looks just like this. Gears galore. We've got some electric switches. Now these switches, are these... For all the people that have done this, are these the limiter switches that people run about to stop the wings going up and down past a certain point? If they are, then uh, that's going to be an interesting one as well, I think. Open up the last set of gears here. So we want the gearbox casing. This one here. And we're going to be dropping, start with the actuating gear, which goes in the first small gear. The actuating gear is this one here with the, uh, the uh, spindle for it. And you've got a rough end here. It's the rough end that's going to go in first. So that will be coming all the way out the other side. What way are they putting it in? They are putting it in this way. A bit weird. I don't know why I don't, I'm, I'm a bit nervous about pushing that through. If it's been, oh, there we go. Because it's got a rough end, it's obviously gonna be a bit harder to get in, but there we go, that's in, so it comes out the other side. Uh, the next one, fit the spindle into the hole next to it. Uh, that's this one. It's already on the piece that it needs to be on, which is a bit crazy. So put that in like that, and now that is engaged, so that turns, as you can see. Then we're going to be putting another gear onto this side, face down. So that's free on, and do it exactly the same on the fourth one I guess let me just spin the page over yes that was easy okay that they turn that's what I expected the first one to be doing nice and easy <laughs> we're gonna close that off with this top um, and the top goes on just getting it the right way with a square going over the bottom lug of this one so it's gonna go on this way I think lining this up is gonna be an issue Hmm, there we go. That's in. Uh, carefully fit the cover of the spindle. It can be quite tricky to get them both together. Press the cover on the casing. Make sure the cover fits all around, which it does. And then we're going to put it in with XW08 screws again. They certainly give us uh, plenty of these screws, don't they? <laughs> right, how many are we going to put in? Just all on this side. I think it's four. What's this motor for then? Does anyone know? 
I'll open them back up and I'll lube then. I'm, I, I, I lube in private, Lou. <laughs> Don't worry. We, we can't be we can't be lubing in public. I'll get I'll get banned from YouTube. <laughs> Maybe cockpit. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. Free. We'll put the fourth one in. So when that's in, that's that. We're going to be fitting the motor now. So just like last time, we're going to grab the motor out of the case here and push the little pinion gear through. So it's nice and flush on that side there. Uh, use pliers or similar to push the pinion further along the motor shaft. So it needs to go all the way down. Right, okay. I use my Just like that then <laughs> Duck build pliers for that. So that's all the way down and then this is going to go into the top here and they've got it this time with the wires to the outside So I need to make sure that engages which it just did. I felt that go in is perfect and then we're going to be putting the cover over just like we did last time so that's going to go in there all the way being held down and it's going to be screwed in with one of the xw08 screws just make sure that's on the lip there which it is got one of the screws here and then that can go in that hole there and then we're going to be putting a shaft in. Which one is this? Uh, I'm just figuring out which shaft this is. Uh, take the droid actuator, which fits onto the projection shaft of the actuating gear and goes this way round. Okay. Uh, line up the hole, making sure the projection arm is in line with the end. And then, so that's going to go on. like that go it's hard because obviously it's got that rough area of the spindle to go on but there you go that's on I don't know how far down it needs to go I'm pushing it quite hard I think I, I haven't pushed it up all the way I have now there we go that's in looking just like that I don't know if it needs turning a little bit but that's in next uh, we can put that to one side we're going to be fitting the electrics take the assembly together no we still need this uh, with the motor switch and the wiring so we need the motor switch which looks like that and that is going to go onto this side over the two holes or two lugs that we can see there so it's going to go on this way that's going to fit over the top when it goes in let's look at the other side there like that that's easy take the droid contacts housing and cover plus the xw10 screw i don't know what alexa's going on about <laughs> and these are going to go into these contact points on here i can see this bit going to be a little bit tricky we've got positive and negative so we need to label where these go so the positive one's going to go through that shaft there and the negative it is labeled inside this part just so you know is going to go into this part just like this this is what r2d2 is going to sit on to light him up so we've got two points in there and then we want to channel this just through the back like that once that's in we have got a backing to put on this which looks like this here that's just going to go over the top and then that's going to be held in with an XW10 screw, uh, which is one of these. There's not much parts left in this. <laughs> so I'll put that screw in now. That's going to hold all of that into place. So they're not going to fall out again. And then obviously when R2-D2 touches these points, he's going to light up. So that's that done. Take this assembly, and where's this one going? Take the assembly together with the gearbox, which I've got. And we're going to be putting some springs. We've got springs. 
We've got one sprue. Oh, there's two here. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare. There we go. They're going to go over these shafts here. So we've got one here and one here, like that. Then we're going to be taking this droid section here, putting that over the top, and they're going to be held in with XW09 screws. Now, if I take my fingers off of this, it's going to ping across the man cave, which I don't want to do. So, I'm holding it with my fingers, doing 200 things at once. They've gave us a lot of other screws here, and uh, I don't know what we're using them for, because... Let me just put the other screw in. This one goes in this side here. Get in there. Right, that's going to stop that falling out. Was, is, is that it? Is that all we have to do? That's all we have to do. So I've got loads and loads of XW... What are these? XW08 screws. Why have I got so many left? Can anyone see that I've missed anything? That's the motor anyway. That's the big thing here. There's no more screw holes for that. Perhaps they just gave me loads of spares. I don't know. I better keep them safe, hey. Uh, we've done the remote. And we've done the motor which was a pain and we've still got the control board for the x-wing here but that is all there is to do in five issues can you believe we did five issues oh we still got these as well metal rods don't know what these are for used in later issue that means i'm going to have to find a home for all of this and i really am running out of space i ain't got a clue where i'm going to put it at the moment all the x-wings are behind the et spaceship there so now I've got loads of little electrics and motors to work. But yeah, as I said, in private, Lou, I know you, would you like me to film it? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to lube those gears up with some grease. So go to the TV needs clearing out vet shows. What? <laughs> What's everyone been talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry I've missed the chat. Rods holds the wings on, do they? Wow. God, it's exciting. That, that, that weren't too bad. But I've, I've, you see, because so many people have complained about the electrics for it and things not working, I am worried, I have to say. I am worried, but we'll see how it goes. But thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Need a bigger boat, need a bigger man cave, that's for sure. Anyway, listen, thanks for joining me tonight. It's nine o'clock on the nose, so we uh, we timed that really well, didn't we? Uh, there will be a Patreon stream tomorrow. I'm not sure what we're building yet, but I think I've got one of everything here, so we'll see what we're going to do. And then Thursday is the normal chat stream. So once again, thank you for joining me. Have a good evening. 